Hello, and welcome back to the Connemara Quarantine Kitchen. I'm coming to you today from on top of the water tank. So let me explain about this system. We get water from the sky. The rainwater comes off the roof, down into this water tank, it's filtered, pumped back into the house. It's an entirely sustainable solution. What is unsustainable, however, is four weeks with no rain in April in Connemara. What's going on? I've had to start flushing the toilet with seawater. The sheep have got no grass. It's a serious situation. I have to do something about this. Back in the 1990s, some of my friends and I watched Dances with Wolves and afterwards decided to give each other Native American names. Mine was Dances on Podiums. It was the 90s, brave on. So in that spirit, I'm going to invoke the 90s and get Dances on Podiums to do a little rain dance. Dances on podiums. Let's hope it works. But this is a show about gastronomy. So let's get back inside to the kitchen and make one of my favourites, Goan Chicken Cafreal. Now, welcome back inside. The cooking party is on, ready to go. So this time last year, I was lucky enough to be in Goa and it was fantastic. As you can see, the food there is amazing. Now, the Portuguese were in charge until 1951, I believe. Um, so this dish, while not being seafood, which is what most of the region's food tends to be, this has got definitely some Portuguese influence. If you're serious about making Indian food, you need a grinder, okay? Now, if you have a big proper blender, that will also work. I also have here, um, my mother took pity on me and got me a new little blender thing but I'm still gonna grind my spices in, in the coffee grinder here. So thank you to my mother for this, and to our, my DPD driver, Garoid, who managed to find me, well done. We're also gonna need uh, a little small pan, just for dry roasting our spices, our obligatory sharp knife and uh, chopping board, and a small bowl, because this is a two-stage process. So this, we're gonna marinate first, and then come back and cook the main dish. Now for the ingredients for this wonderful dish. I have here some chicken. This is chicken thighs. This is actually better on the bone, uh, but mine isn't, so it'll still be lovely. I've got four chicken thighs there. I need the juice of one lime. I need some salt, some turmeric. I've got two large garlic cloves, so four small ones, and a lump of ginger. Showing its Portuguese influence, I've got white wine vinegar, but any vinegar will really do. And for our spices, we have a teaspoon of whole cumin seeds. We have three cardamom pods, four cloves, about 10 whole peppercorns, and a little bit of cinnamon. Three chilies, and a large bunch of coriander. One big bunch, or if you get it in packets, then two packets will do. Okay, so the first stage is we get our chicken. Now, if you have the chicken on the bone, you want to make deep scores all the way down to the bone, okay? I'm just going to make light little scores here and stab it a few times with a fork. So we'll get all the marinade inside. Okay, it goes in the bowl. Repeat, little scores. Do you hear that sound? That is rain! It worked! Okay, back to the cooking. So, into this, we need to put about half a teaspoon of salt and the juice of our lemon. And then, with nice clean hands, get in there and mix it all up. Okay? Make sure it's gone into all those little slices. Okay? There. Now, you need to cover this and put it in the fridge for about 20 minutes. Okay, now before we grind our spices, we're gonna dry roast them. This releases some of the essential oils, gives us different levels of flavor, makes the spices more powerful. Okay, and back over here, back to our wonderful Super Speed 4, and I have a, just a dry pan, no oil, and over a medium heat. And in here, we're gonna put our spices. Now, it's important not to put them all at the same time. They will cook at different times, so, 
Um, cinnamon needs practically no time at all, um, and the cumin a little bit less. So we'll go in with the peppercorns, cloves, and the cardamoms. We'll just give them a little bit of a shake. We're only going to have to do this for a minute, maybe a minute and a half. The minute you get that sort of the fragrance coming off them, it's time to take them off. You don't want them burning. That's been about a minute. I can just begin to smell the cloves. So now is the time for the cumin seeds to go in. Yep, that's about another 30 seconds. That's smelling nice. Get the cinnamon in there for a minute. Now, so there's a wonderful aroma coming off this. The cumin seeds are just starting to change color. It's time. Get them into the grinder. Okay, so into our coffee grinder go our toast, lovely toasted spices. Pop on top. What a smell, that's wonderful. Now, we're going to get everything else into our blender. Okay, so here we go, our spices. Next we get, just take the stalks off, our three chilies, we get our garlic in there, our ginger in there, we get about just over half a teaspoon of turmeric, and two tablespoons of white wine vinegar, and all of our coriander. Hope it all fits. <laughs> now we need to blend this down until there's a fine paste. Now let's try out this super new machine. We need a little bit more vinegar. Okay, we're getting there. Now I need a little bit more liquid than this. I'm gonna have a little bit of water. Not too much. So now we have a nice smooth paste. Okay, let's get our chicken out of the fridge and add our masala to the chicken. Trick, don't rinse this bowl out because we're going to use all the remains later on. Now we want to mix our masala in there. We've got nice clean hands, hands are much better. So we need to get it in there. Make sure that every little crevice is covered by this wonderful green masala. The smell of fresh coriander coming off this is absolutely wonderful. It's all nicely mixed, cover it up, and it goes back in the fridge for as long as you can really. And if you can marinate for overnight, even better, minimum two hours. We'll come back a couple of hours time and get cooking. Now, the chicken has been marinating for about four hours. And there has been nowhere near enough rain. Be careful or dances on podiums will return. This dish is traditionally served with potatoes due to its Portuguese origins and not rice. We've done the difficult part. All we have to do now, prepare the potatoes and get cooking. So I have here one potato. I'm just going to slice it. Now I have my thinly sliced potatoes. I'm going to quickly rinse them to take off all the starch. And that way they'll crisp better fry them. Being of course very careful with the amount of water. Now let's dry them out on a tea towel or paper towel because otherwise they will explode when the water hits the hot oil. So them rinsed and nicely dried. Before we go any further, one of my friends having watched the first video asked a very pertinent question. Should you start to drink before the preparation? Or after. My advice through painful experience is after you've done the major chopping. So now we're good to go. I've selected an IPA because it's an Indian meal, although in this case it's an Irish pale ale. Because we're in Ireland. It's green. Why not? Slauncher. Let's get on with cooking. In India, this dish is often offered as either a dry fry or with the masala. So either just, just the meat on its own or with, as they call gravy, which means this is perfect for things like barbecues, you can put it on a skewer, it'll be lovely. In this case, we're gonna go for the gravy. So, remember earlier on, 
I said, don't throw away whatever's left in your mixer. Now is the time to add some water and give it a whiz to make sure we get all of the goodness out. This now will form the basis of our gravy. In a medium hot pan, or whatever the wonderful Super Speed 4 will let me be medium hot, we need some oil. I'm using again rapeseed oil. Not too much, just to cover. And wait for it to get nice and hot. Now once the oil is nice and hot, what we need to do is we need to take the chicken out. So the important thing when removing the chicken is to try to leave a lot of the marinade in the bowl. That will form the basis of our sauce. So take it out, give it a shake, try to leave most of it in the bowl, and then straight into the pan. Now we probably need to turn this up a bit, get it nice and hot. What we want to do is seal this on both sides. Remember, it doesn't have to be fully cooked through, just sealed. That should probably do. Be careful not to burn the masala. Marinade. Okay, so once we're looking like good, then we add the gravy. We add whatever left of the marinade, that little bit of water we had, and rinse all of the goodness out. And make sure we get every little bit in there. It's so fresh and lovely, all the coriander and lime and spices. It smells fantastic. Now we're gonna to add to the chicken. It's quite liquid at the moment. That's okay, that's good. This will make it lovely and tender. So we need to get this up to the heat. So leave it on a reasonably high heat till it starts to bubble away. Okay, so this has come to a nice rolling boil. I'm now going to turn it down to a reasonably low heat and cover. Now, that'll need to cook for between 15 and 20 minutes and until your chicken is cooked and the sauce is reduced to a reasonable consistency, viscosity. In the meantime, let's get on with this potatoes. Now my rapeseed oil is nice and hot, let's add the potatoes. It helps of course if your floor and your cooker is level. But anyway, it's the quarantine kitchen. It is what it is. Now you probably need to turn them over. If you have tongs it's better, but be careful with non-stick pans of course. Let's get over. Ah! Have a quick check on the chicken. Oh yes, looking great, smelling amazing. Okay, so these are looking ready. Let's get them off and get plating. I'm going to put them on a rack here to uh, drain off. If anyone has any kitchen roll that hasn't already been used as toilet roll in these times of crisis, feel free to use that. Anyway, to get the excess oil off save our arteries. Now let's check on our chicken. Perfect. If you find you've added too much water and your masala isn't as thick as this, then simply remove the chicken, turn it up high, reduce it down. It'll be fine. It's lovely. And now to plate up this wonderful chicken gaffrea. First, we take our lovely crispy potatoes, tastefully arrange them. Whew. Okay, <laughs> still quite hot. Next, we get our chicken. And some of this wonderful masala. Look at this. And then to garnish, I'm gonna cover like a bit of red chili. Now I've de-seeded this chili. Remember if you're de-seeding chili, not only take the seeds out, but also the white pith. That also contains a lot of the stuff that makes it really hot. My favorite, a bit of julienne ginger, a little bit of spring onion, and some coriander. 
finally, we serve with a little side salad and some wedges of lemon. Wonderfully simple, absolutely delicious, go and cuisine. Now, I found a candle, lit it, picked some bluebells from the garden, and I'm ready for my wonderful romantic dinner for one. I, of course, have my Irish pale ale on hand. Actually, the citrus flavour of this goes really well with this dish. But before I start, a quick message from Dances on Podiums. Delighted to hear that feels a bit sick is feeling a bit better. Thank you so much to everybody who's watched, liked, subscribed. I've discovered that my food is being made not only in Ireland, but also in England, in Scotland, in Austria, in the United States and Spain. Brilliant. Keep on the likes, keep on subscribing. It keeps me sane even more than the IPA. Let's tuck in and I'll see you next time. Bye. Mmm.